Subang Airport was a former major international airport serving Kuala Lumpur and also the whole country of Malaysia in general. Subang Airport, officially known as Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah International Airport, witnessed some of the important events in the Malaysian history and especially to, to the Malaysian who has, uh, who has a nostalgia, uh, have a luxury in the past to travel uh, overseas or even to take a taste of what flying feels like because uh, yeah, flying was expensive. So let's take a journey to recall the story of Subang Airport. Before the opening of Subang Airport, the main airport in Kuala Lumpur is located in Sungai Besi. Sungai Besi Airport located uh, about south of the Kuala Lumpur city, really located near with the vicinity of the city centre. However, with the advance of technology and increasing number of people uh, who afford or want to take an air travel, there are some issues, for example, the previously used a toolbox prop was replaced by much faster and much more economical jet aeroplanes which can fly much longer destination. Thus, the issue of noise and also short runway of Sungai Besi Airport caused the government at that time to construct a new international airport in Subang, about uh, 15 km west of Kuala Lumpur. In the year 1961, the construction of this uh, brand new international airport was uh, started and the airport was finished in the 30th of August 1965 with a cost of 65 million ringgit at the time, quite a sum of money. And however, uh, only about 10 days later, uh, and one of the states of Malaysia at that time was uh, uh, with seceded from the country, expelled and becoming its own a sovereign country which is Republic of Singapore on the 9th of August 1965. After its completion, Subang Airport has the longest uh, airport runway in the whole Southeast Asia with 3.7 km long at a time. And even though the, this uh, international airport has only have a single runway, it has uh, three terminals uh, serving to different destinations. And the terminals are simply called uh, Terminal 1, Terminal 2, and Terminal 3. The terminal 1 is the main terminal which serves an uh, international destination with its uh, unique modernistic architecture resembles some of the iconic buildings built at that time, for example, National Mosque and also Parliament of Malaysia. And it served an overseas destination, for example, London, Tokyo and New York. And there are some major events happened in this very uh, terminal. For example, the arrival of Muhammad Ali in the year 1975 for an uh, exhibition boxing match and the funeral of the second Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tun Abdul Razak, after he passed away in London in 1976. And of course, every year there will be a lot number of Muslims going to Hajj uh, by passing this uh, terminal to go to Jeddah International Airport, which is the nearest airport in Makkah. Terminal 2 serves a specific air route between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore and Singapore at that time was served by a former international airport which is located in Paya Lebar which means that any aircraft uh, departed from Kuala Lumpur from Subang will be landed at uh, Paya Lebar airport until the year 1981 when Changi International Airport that everybody knows uh, was open and today Paya Lemba is an air base and no longer serve uh, for a civilian and cargo uh, at uh, air purposes. Meanwhile, the third terminal, better known as Terminal 3, serving domestic uh, destination in Malaysia, for example to Penang, to Kuching and also to Kota Kinabalu. Uh, Terminal 3 might known to some of the Malaysians, especially the compulsory uh, text, uh, the novel 
of Terminal 3 written by Osman Putih. Before the time of the cheap uh, low-cost airline, flying is a luxury and it is quite a rare trip especially for people from uh, Borneo in Sabah and Sarawak to come to Kuala Lumpur because the flying thing is so expensive and flying is so rare for common folks not only for the domestic um, flight but also by all terminal because flying is so expensive at the time unless someone is going for a scholarship or someone is sponsored to go for a business trip or going to Hajj so like maybe like someone in the between the 70s until the 90s maybe only like fly uh, maybe once or twice in his or her lifetime even with the exorbitant price of the air travel you know, during the 80s and 90s Subang actually has exceeded its uh, capacity original capacity which is 15 million passengers per year because of the population growth and also the economic boom of Asia at that time the expanding uh, economy which means that people have more money to spend and also international tourism where Malaysia start to receive a lot of attention uh, from uh, people from Europe and America to come and visit try our food as such Subang airport has, has exceeded its capacity quite early however expanding the airport like building the second runway or expanding terminal will be an unpopular decision because the surrounding uh, land around the Subang airport is an uh, residential area uh, for example in Kampung Melayu Subang and also in, in, in Sungai Buloh such the thing that will be uh, occur more noise and also land acquisition a quite a sensitive issue in Malaysia as such in the year 1993 the government start to uh, construct a brand new international airport 45 kilometers south of Kuala Lumpur in the middle of jungle and palm oil in Sepang uh, today we call it as Kuala Lumpur International Airport better known as KLIA KLIA replaced uh, Subang Airport uh, as the major international airport for Kuala Lumpur since 1998 and in 2002 all domestic flight has been diverted from Subang to KLIA uh, making Subang uh, no longer serving any civilian uh, flights and afterwards Subang was largely abandoned especially in the civilian side and jungle start to slowly take in the land and also consume uh, the buildings this is in the middle of the city in the middle of uh, Subang Jaya and yet there is uh, no building whatsoever in the, this uh, old article news in the year 2001 it shows that Subang airport has a lack of maintenance due to no flight whatsoever civilian flight and such some of the buildings start to be like deteriorated especially the historic uh, terminal one and for Malaysian I know that you look at the touch and go issue in the left side and yes touch and go cut still problematic in 2001 as this year 2022 just count how much how many years is that the abandoned history uh, magnificently designed terminal one uh, faced the fate of many what um, historical building in malaysia phase two being demolished and being flattened and such the architectural beauty of terminal one is only existed in the old postcard and photos that you can search on google and that's it because the building is there no more however subang is not totally abandoned because the cargo uh, aircraft and also military base is still there so subang airport is still uh, open but not to the public because of the location of KLIA is quite far from the city center it is not really a good uh, strategically uh, businessly wise to open a short uh, hall at desti domestic destination between KLIA and also uh, Malaysian um, cities and such uh, during the mid 2000s there are some discussion to reopen Subang as a secondary airport as a backup to the Kuala Lumpur International Airport and the old terminal tree has been refurbished and being reopened and renamed as Subang Sky Park and ironically enough 
Subang Airport is actually much closer to Kuala Lumpur than KLIA itself. However, due to noise and pollution control, only a turboprop uh, aircraft uh, can allow to be operated in Subang Sky Park and cargo aircraft still operated there even this jet size thing but their yeah, cargo is not like departing every 15 minutes so yeah, it does that matter and Subang Airport also still being used as a military base especially after the closure of uh, Sungai Besi uh, Airport to be redeveloped as Bandar Malaysia as such Subang Airport is not really like totally abandoned and actually still actively used uh, for the economic activities albeit that Subang Airport is just a skeleton or shadow of what it used to be look like in the past especially uh, after the demolition of Terminal 1 but the tower is still there and the former site of Terminal 1 after being demolished and flattened is today is a cargo plane maintenance and uh, aircraft building company site until 2018 Subang Airport didn't have what KLI has which is a rail line in the year 2018 a brand new rail line from Kuala Lumpur Central KL Central to Subang Sky Park has been opened and been named as Sky Park Link uh, much of the video footage that you saw in this video was taken from the train from Sky Park Link even though the rail is quite new the train is actually old it is made uh, by Hyundai in the year 1996 previously served a commuter line uh, in the Klang Valley surrounding Kuala Lumpur and you can see the age by looking closely uh, at the train if you are interested to visit Subang Airport or you want to catch a flight there you can take a Sky Park link from KL Central to Subang Sky Park Station and it takes about 45 minutes per trip you can also choose to take the bus from Pasar Seni Station I mean bus station not the LRT or MRT Station 1 actually just a nearby within the complex or if you choose want to drive for yourself you can drive from Kuala Lumpur and drive toward Klang you can find a sign of Subang with the aircraft sign signaling the airport and just follow the sign thank you so much for watching I hope you learned something new or recall your nostalgia of Subang Airport Thank you so much again and see you in the next video.